Lindsay, like mm -hmm. so many other people, probably we walked into the kitchen this morning and there you go, our pipe was frozen. And then, of course, comes the fear that the pipe is going to burst. I spoke to one local plumber today who says that fear, that concern, that problem is only going to continue as this bitterly cold weather presses on. What's up, guys? I thought I'd make a different type of video today. I've been spending a lot of time doing research on how one could prepare or better prepare for short or long-term energy outages in relation to the plumbing in your dwelling. When the power grid went down in Texas in 2021, it was an SHTF moment and many Texans couldn't heat because they had electric boilers, their pipes were freezing and bursting from everywhere, and they couldn't get water from their well pumps because they had no electricity, which is quite devastating. During the outage, I got so many positive comments on one of the videos I made to keep your pipes from freezing, and I think it really helped out a lot of folks. Now, seeing there aren't too many plumbing-focused videos on this subject, I thought I'd be the first to make one. So, here's what I'll be covering in this video. First, I want to talk about prevention and preparedness. Like they say, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. If you could prevent something from happening, you're already ahead of the game. I'll be going through how you could protect your plumbing system from getting damaged in case an outage does occur. Secondly, I want to talk about the different energy options most of us have at our disposal and how we could use them during an outage, whether it's propane, solar, diesel, gasoline, or even wood. I'll be going through price comparisons, best storage practices, pros and cons, and more. And lastly, how to manage and repair a burst pipe to limit any water damage. A burst pipe can account for thousands of dollars of damage and wasted water. There's simple ways to limit the amount of damage done from them, and I'll be going through a few different methods. So with all of that said, let's get started. So first off, how could you prepare your plumbing system before an outage occurs? I'd say the first thing really would be to insulate the pipes that you think would be prone to freezing. This could be done before the cold arrives and it'll give a layer of protection to your pipes. It's inexpensive, easy, and it's quick to do too. Something else you could do would be to make sure you have a backup battery ready to go for your sump pump or well pump if you have any of these. Many installers do not account for these because it's a lot cheaper to do without. But in the event of an outage, it's crucial to keep these going to prevent your basement from getting flooded and to make sure you keep getting potable water. As for a well pump backup, the best option is to have a manual hand pump outside, as most electric well pumps require 240 volts to run them, which is a lot of energy. And I'll get to an alternate solution for these later in the video. And lastly would be to familiarize yourself with your plumbing system. Know where your main shutoff valve and lowest points are, as if there is a burst, you'll be shutting it off and draining it from there. Apart from that, you of course want to stock up on water, canned foods, medical supplies, some extra cash, and make sure you have a solid plan for you and your family for when it hits if it does. So what if an outage was to occur? What are the different types of energies that we could use? Obviously, in this case, we wouldn't be relying on the electrical grid as it would more than likely be offline. We'd be relying on propane, solar power, diesel, gasoline, and wood, so we have quite a few alternatives to work with. The most obvious way would be to use a gas or solar generator. These are the devices you'll mostly use to keep your plumbing going in the event of an outage, as they're powerful, reliable, and portable. If you carry diesel fuel for your car or truck, you could also buy one of these diesel heaters, which are really cheap and easy to install, and they do a great job at heating. Furthermore, you could use propane heaters like this Mr. Buddy heater right here, they're super convenient and give out a lot of heat which makes it perfect for thawing out frozen pipes. And if you have a fireplace, it's also a good idea to keep it going to heat up the space. I'll have links to all the products I use in the description box below if you're interested. So let's go into the details about each one of these. So what are the different types of generators we could use? Here I have side-by-side side a gasoline generator and a solar generator. 
Generators convert fuel-based power or solar energy into electricity, which could then give you some similar power to the electrical grid. Gas generators can often be upgraded to work with propane with conversion kits like these, which makes them versatile. This particular kit is from Hutch Mountain, and I recommend doing the conversion because propane has an infinite shelf life, it's a much cleaner burning fuel, and there's no spills. So really, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. So for power, depending on the type of generator you have and wattage output it offers, you'll be able to run anything from a small 250 watt space heater to keep your pipes from freezing, to being able to run the electricity throughout your whole house. An easy way to know if you have enough power coming from your generator is to do some simple math. Seeing generators use watts as a metric, you need to know how many watts your device requires per hour. If we look at this small space heater, it says it on the sticker, but on some devices it doesn't. So an easy way to get the wattage is to multiply the voltage by the amperage, and that'll be watts per hours required to run the device. Another thing to know is the difference between continuous watts and peak watts. Every electrical device at startup has a surge in power to start it up which then stabilizes when it's running. And it's important to match these numbers with the ones on your generator. So if we look at the EcoFlow Delta Pro here, we could see that it offers 3600 continuous or running watts per hour and 7,200 peak watts. So for example, if you were to run a standard sump pump alone with this particular generator, you divide your generator's power by your pump's demand and it would give you its runtime. Now, these don't run full time. So let's assume it only runs five minutes an hour. You'd be able to get 36 hours of runtime, which is more than enough for your typical household. If you were to use a gas generator, you absolutely need to run it outside with an extension cord to prevent carbon monoxide fumes from poisoning you. Or something like this could happen. Eight-year-old girl dying of carbon monoxide poisoning after a car was left running in a garage to help generate heat. A man and a seven-year-old boy taken to the hospital. I know it's cold, but uh, you got to be careful about using, like, say, generators or a car inside a garage or uh, any type of uh, fire, carbon monoxide, uh, it's, it's odorless and it can kill people very easily. You cannot, under any circumstances, run a gasoline or propane engine indoors. So please be careful with these. If you wanted to power your well pump with either one of these generators, you'd most likely need to daisy chain them or get a bigger model, as most well pumps require 240 volts to run them. The reason for this is that wells are pretty deep and they need a really powerful pump to fight the pressure. And usually, 120 volt pumps just don't cut it. So keep this in mind when looking for a generator. Some other uses with these generators are to use small electric heaters to heat a prone to freezing pipe, power your tankless boiler if you have one, or to power your entire home with a transfer switch. I made a graph with all the pros and cons between gas and solar generators just so you can make a better decision before buying one. And for those of you wondering which type of generator I prefer, I tend to go with the solar one for a few reasons. I like that there's a display that tells you the runtime you have left so that you don't have to do it yourself. I also like that there's four outlets and not two like on my Honda. And I also like the fact that if you have a solar panel or two, it makes you completely independent of any energy source, which is a big plus. There's also a really neat app that gives you all of the info that you get on the screen. But the feature that I like the most is that it's silent and it doesn't emit any carbon monoxide, which means I could keep my investment inside where it's safe. If you're looking to get your own, check the description box for a promo code. Apart from using propane to power a generator, you could use it on a portable heater like this one here. These Mr. Buddy heaters are great to have around the house as they give out a ton of heat, they're inexpensive to buy and run, and don't use up a lot of energy. 
I'd use these near a sink cabinet on a low setting or wherever a pipe would be prone to freezing. These burners aren't supposed to be used inside, but after contacting the manufacturer about this subject, this is what they said. As per the Canadian government, all of our Buddy Series heaters are not certified indoor safe. They are outdoor heaters only. They are however identical in every way to the heaters that are indoor safe in the United States. So <laughs> some cool word games there for you. But if you want my opinion, you could use them inside. Just make sure to have a few carbon monoxide alarms, some good ventilation, and you're good to go. As for diesel heaters, I got this Chinese heater from Amazon, made myself a patio door concoction, and I'm able to heat a 1000 square foot apartment no problem with it, which would keep my pipes from freezing. These only take a few watts per hour to run, so even a small solar generator or car battery is ideal for this application. There's plenty of videos on YouTube about these for those willing to go this route. And lastly, firewood. I always like keeping some firewood ready to burn, but it's not my preferred way to heat just for the fact that there's all of the other ways to heat which are just easier. I'd say don't stick with a specific type of energy. Try to have some redundancy and work with as many as you possibly can. This will put all of the chances on your side. I also made this graph right here for you to make an educated decision on which energy is best suited for you and your particular situation. So what do you do if you weren't prepared at all and a pipe does burst? The best thing to do is to close your main water valve. Now as we could see here, Not everybody thinks of doing this at first, either because they just aren't aware of where the valve is or they're simply shocked with what just happened. Now in this particular situation, I would at least put a towel on the pipe to divert the water into a bigger bin or something such as a garbage bin or recycling bin to minimize the damages. Another option is to use one of these repair clamps that you bought beforehand. You basically clamp it on the pipe and move on with your day. It'll give you some time to find your main valve to close it and empty the system to prevent any other bursts. I suggest watching the video I made that really helped many people in 2021. So I'll link it in the description box below along with all the products and gadgets I used in this video. I hope this video prevents any of this happening to you and your family and if it does, leave a comment below and tell us your story. And until the next storm, keep safe and thanks for watching.